the Center of Board of Education meeting for Monday, November 16th. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Here. Annie Self. Here. Mr. Schroyer. Here. Megan Sparks. Here. And Dr. Rowan. Here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Motion for approval of the agenda. Move. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Andy Selma. Yes. Mr. Schroyer. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. And Dr. Rowe. Yes. Next, the uh, Board of Education reports a legislative <coughs> report. Mrs. Sparks. Got it. Students returning from the campaign season committees have mainly been hearing testimonies on various bills. The Senate Education Committee did adopt a substitute version of House Bill 360, which prescribed suspensions and expulsion policies for cases of harassment, intimidation, or bullying. The substitute version revises the types of discipline a district may administer for such cases. Discipline in those cases include detentions and in or out of school suspensions of up to 10 days or an out of school expulsion. Also, as you may remember, earlier this year, Mr. Yux brought it to our attention that there was talk of taking away some of the alternate pathways for graduation. This would put roughly 37% of Ohio's high school seniors in jeopardy of not graduating this spring, an estimated 1,000 students in the Dayton area alone. During the Capitol Conference that was held in Columbus earlier this month, I was able to sit in on a session where Senator Lehner, who is a chairman for the Senate Education Committee's vote. During the session, she said, and I quote, I would bet 99% that the alternative pathways are reinstated for 1920. So hopefully there would be good news for our seniors soon. And that's the end of the report. Thank you. Next, student reps. Come on up. wrapping up our student surveys and reviewing those with Mr. Carroll. We've made it through all of them at this point, and Jacob's going to talk about a little bit of the results of those. Also, Mrs. Self has talked with Charlotte McGuire, who's on the State Board of Ed, and she would like to meet with us about our role and hopes of getting a student on the State Board as well. So in conclusion from our student survey, we kind of made this overarching sheet I shared with Mr. Carroll we're just waiting for approval. What it, uh, it kind of outlines the main topics that we found from the survey, and we're going to send this back to advise, all the advisories so they can see what we gained from the survey and how we answered their uh, questions. So in light of what we learned from the survey that we just talked about, given how our voter registration sessions went earlier in the year. We're planning on holding at least one more, probably this month in December, as well as another candy and comment session to use what we learned from the survey. Well, do me a favor, just introduce yourselves. Oh. <laughs> well, my name is Ben Thomas, I'm a senior. I'm Jacob Myers, and I'm a junior. I'm Julia Loki, I'm a senior. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Good job. Next, John wants to just give a, <coughs> one little comment about charter schools, our favorite topics. In the uh, paper this weekend was an article about an uh, audit done by the State Auditor Office concerning how the uh, State Department of Education didn't properly report the uh, low scoring charter schools in order to get the scores higher in order to make sure they got federal financing. Uh, it was interesting, and if you go onto the web page for the uh, State Auditors, you can read the whole report, and I would recommend it to anyone who's interested. I didn't read it all, it was pretty lengthy, but I read a lot of it. But what's interesting about it, when they were asking the various heads of various committees who was responsible for making sure this occurred, people would say, well, I didn't know, I didn't know that I was supposed to tell anyone, I didn't know I was supposed to report it, the state superintendent said, well, I thought he was going to take care of it. The lack of uh, transparency and the lack of responsibility was amazing and also disappointing. So it's just a continuation of what we've been seeing with charter schools throughout the state of Ohio. I'm not saying that they're all bad. There are some very good ones. 
but the history of the charter schools and how with ECOT and others have just stolen money from local school districts and continuing poor performance without any type of repercussions is just absolutely terrible for the citizens of the state and for our community because I don't know many hundreds of thousands of dollars each year we uh, have taken away from us to go to charter schools. So I would recommend everyone get a chance to look at it and review it. It's something that's harming every community school in the state of Ohio, including ours. Thank you. Mitch, why don't you tell us how much, roughly? Yes. Uh, yes, Dr. Rohr. Um, last year we had nearly 700000 It was between six hundred fifty dollars and $700,000 that went out for charter schools last year. Where does that money come from? That comes from the state of Ohio. And where does that come from? From the taxpayers, the taxpayers of the state of Ohio. Your money. Seven hundred thousand dollars a year is going out to pay for charter schools when we are an excellent school district. But it comes away from it comes from us. It comes from us. Right, right. From it comes to us and it goes to them. All right. So thanks, John. All right, next superintendents reports. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rohr. I'm gonna call uh, our director of business operations, John Wesley, at the podium. He's going to make a, a first one report and then do an introduction for our first honors group tonight. Good evening. Uh, I'd just like to share with the board tonight um, and our community our Energy Star ratings uh, for this school year. How's that? Is that better? I just want to share uh, again with the board and our community our Energy Star ratings for this school year. Um, I'm proud to share with all of you that for the fifth year in a row, uh, all of our buildings, all of our eligible school buildings have earned Energy Star rating. Uh, Energy Star comes out uh, with a survey and with data that proves that uh, energy certificated buildings that have uh, lower operating costs based upon their Energy Star uh, ratings uh, have better long-term assets and, and uh, proven to have energy cost savings uh, for, for their buildings. As you can see, uh, we have 10 buildings that have earned Energy Star rating for the last seven years, uh, and 11 of those buildings have earned that distinction for the last six years. Uh, our 12 buildings are among 58 Energy Star rated school buildings uh, in the state of Ohio, and that is K-12 school buildings uh, across the state. And then last year, uh, some numbers I shared with you last year, that we were among 74 Energy Star rating rated buildings across the state of Ohio last year. So you think, what does this mean? How do you term that in terms of dollars and tax dollars uh, in, in our community and how we save money uh, for our community? Uh, this chart, and I know that the, it's, it's very small to see, but there's really one number that I, I really want to uh, make note here. Uh, in this chart, you can see the different properties, the high school all the way through Weller Elementary, uh, the energy cost savings or the energy cost per building of each of those buildings and then the national median average uh, for buildings similar in size and the cost to operate buildings that are similar to the size of, of our buildings. And then the far column, you can see the savings that we gather based upon our energy costs and the national median uh, energy cost average. Down below, you can see if you take all of our buildings together, you can see that we saved about $317,000 uh, and some change in regards to our um, energy cost and energy savings. So, it's, it's been a great program for us. Um, again, it's another year where we can show that we have savings uh, based upon the Energy Star program. And then the next slide, I just want to kind of show you a chart. Uh, it gives you a quick sample of what uh, or how some of the buildings do in that Energy Star rating and, and what Energy Star buildings save uh, the most amount of money. You can see the high school, for example. Uh, there's a huge savings at the high school. And then you can see some of our other buildings, and then I'm just going to quickly pick on Stingley Elementary for a minute. You see a smaller savings, and I'll kind of come back to that in a couple more slides now as Energy Star is changing some of the ways that they are rating their buildings and how that process is going to move forward in the future. In this chart, you can see a five-year comparison, um, and you can see uh, the amount of money or the savings based upon the standard costs versus that median energy cost uh, that I just shared with you. Uh, if you look closely, in 2017, last year when I gave this presentation in November, uh, we had a savings of about $732,000, and you can see the significant drop going to 2018, which is $317,000. That has a lot to do with the, the way Energy Star has now uh, changed their criteria and how they are evaluating buildings and how buildings will be evaluated moving forward in the future. So it's really an opportunity for us to go in and to look at our buildings, reevaluate our energy uh, usage in our buildings, 
and determine new ways to save money uh, in those areas. Another way to look at um, the information uh, as well is each of the buildings receive an index score. And for those buildings to be Energy Star rated, they have to receive an index score of a 75 or higher. Uh, just a quick comparison, um, you see the index scores uh, are the scores that I presented last year at, at this time. And then the new index score, which is not really the new score, but is a score that was captured back in October this fall uh, with the new index score. And you can see the difference in some of our buildings. So for example, a high school dropped from a 97 to an 87. Uh, we have some other buildings. Uh, I mentioned Stingley earlier in, in the previous slide where the, the savings chart was kind of small. You can see in this uh, index change, uh, it's the building that loses the most points in October where it drops almost 24 points. It goes from 82 to a 58. So the index score is something that uh, the business office, we look at every month when we get in all of our um, energy bills, our gas bills, electric bill, and compare uh, our costs for those buildings. Uh, it's a quick look for us so we can see how our buildings are performing. But due to the changes with Energy Star, you know, we're looking to have an audit done on all of our buildings to see ways that we can save money on um, moving forward in the future. So that's my presentation. I just wanted to share with the board that for the fifth year in a row, we have reached the Energy Star rating again this year. Any questions? And now I'd like to uh, take a minute uh, for honors and introduce uh, Amy Trick, our transportation supervisor, and Andrew Grasty, our assistant transportation supervisor, to come up. Uh, for the last several years, uh, we've recognized uh, our bus drivers who participate in the state rodeo, and I will let these guys kind of explain uh, what the rodeo is all about. Uh, usually we have this presentation in the spring. The state decided to change uh, the rodeo to have from the spring to the fall. So tonight we get a chance to recognize our drivers that participate in, uh, in, in that contest. The thing I would just like to share is I appreciate uh, what the drivers do. And I don't think a lot of people realize uh, what our drivers do to prepare for this contest. Uh, they spend a lot of time, a lot of hours uh, at our transportation facility, uh, setting up cones, setting up obstacle courses that they drive their buses through uh, to prepare for the contest. And really, they do it because they're trying to make sure that our kids are safe uh, each and every day. And so I thank them for their efforts and what they do. And at this time, I'll turn it over to our transportation supervisors. Thanks, John. Each year, Centerville school bus drivers compete at the Regional School Bus Rodeo. This year's Regional Rodeo was held on October 13th. During the rodeo, during the rodeo, participants are required to take a 50-question written test regarding Ohio law for school buses and perform multiple maneuvers in a school bus designed to test the skills and knowledge of each school bus driver participating. Drivers have an opportunity to advance based on their score to the state school bus rodeo in Columbus, which was held on October 27th. This year, we had nine drivers participate and four staff members volunteer to judge at the event. Our nine drivers were Tim Bach, Chris DeWitt, Linda Hilton, Catherine Kasperzak, Tom McCullough, Therese Maletti, Doug Pence, Beth Pekorski, and Carla Schiller. Based on the score Therese, Doug, and Catherine received at the regional rodeo, they qualified for the state rodeo, uh, where they competed on Saturday, October 27th in London, Ohio. Our volunteer judges for this event from our district were David Cobb, Vicki Kendrick, Ed Pekorski, and myself. Andy and I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the individuals standing up here for the outstanding job they do each day as they safely navigate the streets of our community. Congratulations to all the drivers that participated and 
uh, like John and Andy and Andrew said, our drivers work very, very, very hard to make sure that all of our children, all of our students are safe every single day. And we certainly appreciate their efforts in, in doing that. So thank you again and congratulations. Uh, the, the next honors I'm going to call uh, the coordinating principal of Centerville High School, Mr. John Carroll, to the podium. He's going to make an introduction. Uh, one of our uh, high school students is going to be introduced, and uh, he's going to talk a bit about the great things that they contributed to uh, Centerville High School. John? Thank you. Thanks for allowing me to be here and present. Uh, I'd like to present to you Allie Fitzharris and share a little bit about a project that Allie's been working on uh, for Centerville High School. Um, Allie has an artistic talent that she likes to put. She's also got a big heart. I should probably say big heart first. Artistic talent would be second. And so uh, she always wants to be helpful and contribute to the culture of her school. And uh, when I met with the Board of Education reps, uh, we were talking about signage and stuff about our uh, uh, school safety reporting line uh, that could be for, used for any reason. It could be used for uh, drugs, alcohol, any kind of uh, behavior that would need to be reported. Uh, depression and suicide is another part and certainly bullying. And so you might actually remember Allie, she's been before the board for recognition before, where Allie actually on her own uh, basically developed a poster contest for elementary school students, an anti-bullying poster contest, and she, and she led uh, that process and funded uh, the gifts and the rewards for that process out of, the, out of her own money. And so Allie continues to use her art uh, to contribute to the school and to uh, basically earn money that she can give back to others. And she has created the uh, graphic that you can see uh, presented up there. Uh, that will be the posters that are placed in all the buildings or all the rooms here at Centerville High School. So I'd just like to publicly thank Allie for uh, her contribution and, and for continuing to use art to find her voice. So well done. We want to thank you again for your efforts and helping all the students here at Central High School. So thank you and congratulations on a great effort to help all the students here at the high school. Thank you. Thank you. Next is hearing of the public. At this time, we like to give everyone an opportunity if they'd like to come up to the lectern, state your name, address. Actually, you don't state your address anymore, but your name. Um, if you have any comments, please limit them to three minutes. They'll be addressed at a later time. Anyone like to come up to the podium? Lectern? No. All right. Next, we'll move on to Treasurer's Report. Mr. Peterman. Yeah. Good evening. My presentation this evening is a financial summary after four months into the fiscal year. General fund revenue from all sources combined is on target with the five-year forecast projection after four months into the 2018-19 fiscal year. The chart on this slide shows that overall revenue is up 5.9% through the first four months of this fiscal year. This is only because the first of the two homeowner rollback payments has been received from the county auditor one month earlier than it was received last year. The five-year forecast approved in September projects a decrease of 3.6% in the revenue for the year, for the fiscal year. You can also see from this chart when combining two years of revenue after four months that the bulk of the revenue continues to come from local sources at 87.9% of the general fund. State revenue continues to be an area where we receive lack of support in comparison to other schools in Montgomery County and across the state. State revenue is only making up 12.1% of the general fund of the revenue as shown on this chart. General fund expenses from all categories combined are up 9.6%, but are under budget after four months into the 2018-19 fiscal year. The chart on this 
the chart on this slide shows a high level breakdown of expenses through the first four months of the fiscal year. Combining two years of salary, salaries after four months continu continues to be our largest expense at 64.1% as expected, 64.1%. The benefits category is currently at 26.8% through October. The green areas on this chart for all other expenses are low in comparison at 9.1% of which is as expected as well. We are a personnel driven service organization focused on meeting the needs of students and that's why this particular area is low at 9.1%. Each year benefits enrollment for employees is during the month of November. Table set meetings were held at all the buildings in November to assist employees with the benefits that are being offered by our school district. These table sit opportunities were also used to emphasize ways employees can save on the cost to themselves and the district when using the health uh, plan specifically. The Auditor of State's Office conducted the annual review of the, is conducting the annual review of the 2017-18 financial records and the comprehensive annual financial report. The on-site on review of the financial, rec, uh, financial records has concluded um, and the review of the comprehensive annual financial report will continue through December. The completion of the full audit and preliminary uh, report is expected by the end of December or early January. This concludes my report this evening, unless there are any additional questions from the Board of Education. No questions, Mitch, just a comment. I just want to tail dove on some of this. You know, when we talk about the funding of our district, when only 12.1% is coming from the state, we have to make that up, obviously, through levies. Um, when you look at charter schools, as Mr. Dahl talked earlier, we're losing $700,000 a year that's coming right out of our district money. Um, our, our employees' administrative costs are one of the lowest in the state. We work every day. You look at the uh, Energy Star savings, how much we save every year. So it becomes frustrating that you know the state continues to take money from us, not give us much back. Um, you know, we, we are at the point where most school districts go for levies every three to four years max. Um, we are in the process of, again, contemplating when our next levy will be. Um, but again, this, this coming 2019, it'll be six years since we came to the voters in our district for a levy. Um, that's, that's almost unheard of in this state. So I want you to know, as those things come about and people start talking about this, realize what a good job we're doing, how the state is taking tons of money, giving it to places or not giving it to us, and we have managed to spread this wealth out for six years without going back to the voters. Um, so just, just know that when you start hearing about levy talking coming up, um, any talk of we, we're wasting money, we're not doing well, just not true, it's just not true. So anyhow, just wanted to throw that in as we move forward. So One last piece of that, we continue to get the unfunded mandates from the state as right. well, and the special needs costs continue to rise as well, as those requirements, the mandates, they're needed mandates, but they're all costly as well. Right. Thank you. Next, Treasurer's recommendations. Consider approving the October 2018 financial statements listed below. The monthly financial, the fund activity reports, the appropriations, the general funding spending report, general fund summary, general fund summary comparison. Purchase orders included in statement number seven, approved by administration, then and now certified by the treasurer and supported by the board resolution, totaling $145,476.50. So moved. Okay. Hold the roll. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Annie Self? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. And Dr. Rower? Yes. Next, considering a resolution for a 5% increase to the Centerville Washington Township Library premiums for calendar year 2019. Again, just to explain, um, another way this district has continued to save money is by going self-funded for our insurance plans. We have kept costs down, the costs have risen, significantly over the last couple of years, but again, we're still saving the districts hundreds of thousands of dollars by going self-funding. Part of the reason we could spread these levies out so long. So the libraries, we we funnel, the money comes from the state to our library by a state 
come to our school district by state requirements, then the monies go out to the school, to, to, the, to the library. So part of what we have done to help the library save money is have them as part of our self-funded plan. So this year we're voting for a 5% increase for the libraries. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Annie Sell. Yes. Mr. Schroyer. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. And Dr. Rower. Yes. Next, consider approving the following Board of Education meetings, October 22nd and November 19th. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Annie Sell. Yes. Mr. Schroyer. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. And Dr. Rower. Yes. Next, superintendent's recommendations. Superintendent recommends accepting resignations as listed on Schedule A. Recommends the employment, of change of employment status or change of contract status for the certificated persons listed on Schedule B for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. Recommends the employment or change of employment status for the support staff persons listed on Schedule C for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. Superintendent recommends the employment of persons listed on Schedules B and B1 for supplemental contracts or extra duty assignments. Superintendent recommends the granting of leaves of absence for the persons listed on Schedule E for the reasons and on the dates given. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Annie Sell. Yes. Mr. Schroyer. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. And Dr. Rower. Yes. Superintendent recommends the employment of the person listed on Schedule D2 for supplemental contracts or extra duty assignments. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Annie Sell. Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. And Dr. Rower? Yes. Next, consider approving the 2019 Board of Education meeting minutes, of which we discussed at our work session last week for the following 2019 year. So moved. Second. Second. Will the roll please? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Annie Sell? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. And Dr. Rower? <coughs> yes. Next, consider approving the reappointment of Richard Carr to the Washington Centerville Public Library Board of Trustees to another seven-year term that would begin January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2025. Again, we have the requirement to approve the board members. Those board members are selected by the Centerville Washington Township Library and approved by us. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Annie Sell. Yes. Mr. Schroyer. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. And Dr. Rower. Yes. Next, consider resolution approving the following revised board policies, which were discussed at our work session last week. Number 5610, removal, suspension, and permanent exclusion of students. 5610.02, in school discipline. 5610.03, emergency removal of students. And 5611, due process rights. So moved. Second. Dr. Rory, you want to um, you want to explain that? Sure. Um, earlier this month, actually November 2nd, uh, a new piece of legislation uh, that uh, came out of House Bill 318 was passed into law and signed into law. And basically the approval of these four revised board policies keep us compliant with the new Ohio Rise Code based on this new legislation that came out. All four of these policies have to do with discipline or types of discipline that school districts are allowed to uh, to use when disciplining students in public school districts. So for us, basically, we were compliant in most everything in there. These, there were just a few changes in each one of these policies. But again, wanted to make sure that we're compliant with the law. And so uh, we did talk about these last week at the work session. The board had an opportunity to review those changes. And tonight, they're approving those so that, again, we can stay compliant with the higher advice code. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Annie Sell. Yes. Mr. Schroyer. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. And Dr. Rowe. Yes. Motion for adjournment. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Annie Sell. Yes. Mr. Schroyer. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. And Dr. Rowe. Yes. Thank you all for coming.